So when we think about optics, say you want to build a camera uh, to actually image something, what would be in that camera? It would have several lenses, maybe some fibers. But today, the way we build these systems is completely different. There are no those bulk, big lenses. They don't exist anymore. They shouldn't exist anymore. Today, if we want to build any imaging system or any optical system in general, we do what all the electronics folks do. We sit in front of a computer, CAD, actually just draw the chip, a little chip that has the optics inside, send it out to a fab and get back the little chip. So I'm going to show you examples of that. The bottom line for you to remember from this talk is that all technologies related to optics, anything, we are talking about lasers, we are talking about uh, 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 displays, we are talking about imaging systems, camera, all of those are being extremely miniaturized to chip scales and can be massively manufactured. So uh, the, the field of, this is called silicon photonics, silicon from the analogy, because basically all of this is, is actually being produced on silicon. Uh, and photonics, we are talking about optics, right? So it's really complete analogy to silicon microelectronics, right? This is a field that started about uh, 15 years ago. The first uh, ideas uh, came from my own group on how to actually miniaturize optics and produce in mass uh, uh, scale. And there was a need for that, an urgent need. And that's what really made this uh, area uh, uh, pop up and, and succeed. And the need was the, what Gillian actually mentioned, the Moore's Law. So we think that Moore's Law is a huge success, but really, Moore's Law is dying quite several years ago already. It's really computers. If you, buy, if you go to uh, uh, any uh, company and, and try to get a computer uh, today, it's going to have more or less the same performance that it had two years ago. And the reason is because of the power dissipation, all that enormous heat that is being dissipated just because you're trying to transfer a lot of information between different processors, for example. Okay, so you're trying to, to solve, say, an AI issue, and the computer is working so hard just to transfer data from memory to processor, from processor to processor. It's not the computing that's burning energy. It's just transferring the information. That's what's consuming energy. So actually, data centers, which basically you can think about it as you have hundreds of thousands of computers, they are desperate. They are consuming enormous amount of power just because of this transfer of information. That takes a lot of energy. And actually, Microsoft is so desperate that they are plopping into the ocean chunks of data centers to cool it off. The, the, uh, uh, the degree of desperation for lowering the energy required for computing is very high. And as AI is getting more and more real and is consuming more and more energy, this issue is becoming more severe. But optics can solve it. Light can actually transfer information with no power. 
We know that, right? When you touch a fiber, it's gold. But when you touch a cable, it's always hot. So light fundamentally transfer information with no power. So that demand for lowering uh, uh, power dissipation really propelled the field forward. And now, silicon photonics is everywhere. So I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, this is a picture of uh, data centers where fibers are now being introduced in almost every data center. Miniaturized silicon photonics chips are inside computer racks and are being linked by fibers. All information that has a very high data rate, high bandwidth, and needs to propagate any, uh, any distance larger than a few millimeters is all optics today. And it's all based on miniaturized optical components. So that basically enabled, I'm going to skip a few slides so that I uh, have time to talk about, uh, that enabled the miniaturization of optics, not just for future of AI or future of data centers, but for any applications related to optics. That's why I mentioned, for example, the uh, display of vision or microscope for medical devices all of those are now based on miniaturized optical component on a chip scale. So what am I talking about? So when you think about a fiber, that's about the size of a fiber that I'm, I'm, I'm showing. Now think about taking down and miniaturizing by at least a factor of 100, OK? So when you actually send light in, it's in a tiny little uh, fiber, what we call waveguides, on a silicon chip. It is, silicon chip is the same chip that does all the microelectronics. And you can have microelectronic circuits controlling the flow of light. So that's how those silicon waveguides uh, look like. So I'm comparing 100 meters of fibers wrapped around, and we can have all this in a tiny little chip. So that's a picture of uh, the chip where you have hundreds of meters in a tiny little millimeter size device. That's a complete game changer for optics. So what you are seeing here light coming in from the little waveguide, and it's wrapped around. That's why uh, uh, it looks this dense thing, but what you see really is a spiral. So that's kind of a zoom in here. We have two of those spirals, uh, uh, one next to another, and you can, compl you can basically trap light and release on demand. So I'm going to show you uh, several uh, applications. Uh, just so that you have a bigger picture of this field called silicon photonics, uh, miniaturization of optics. It started in 2003. We've demonstrated the critical uh, uh, components for that. We have uh, uh, more than 40 uh, patents that have been uh, granted, and uh, half of them, at least, have been licensed by, by multiple components, uh, multiple companies all across uh, different applications. Today, this field moved from just simple theoretical ideas to actual products being commercialized in less than 10 years. This is the fastest growing field other than giant uh, magnetoresistance who actually uh, got the Nobel Prize in 2007. So this is, there is an enormous excitement about this uh, silicon photonics. So that's what we are talking about. We are talking about making systems. Imagine you want to make a microscope. We can do it. We can actually miniaturize all the components of the microscope and build hundreds of thousands of those on a single wafer. 
Imagine you want to make an AR, a display system. All the different optical components we can print and manufacture on a wafer scale. So this is an example. I mean, I had to uh, 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 look very, very little uh, on the news, but there's always news about silicon photonics and what, uh, 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 what is the technology that it is enabling uh, these specific months. So there are, it's really enabling uh, tons of different technologies. This specific uh, uh, article talks about the data centers. Um, uh, several of you probably were here and heard about Voyant, which is a, a startup that we uh, uh, just uh, uh, kicked off uh, that is based on silicon photonics for autonomous vehicles. Now, the idea of that is I want to create a camera, but not, it's not a simple camera. I want to create a 3D camera where I can tell where are you in the 3D space and how fast you're moving. So for that, I need to shoot light to you, get back the light, and interfere with the one I sent, and get that information. So Google cars do that today. That's the LiDAR. And they have a huge thing on top of the Google car. They have this beam that moves around. But the whole system on top of the Google car cost about twice the actual car. Because it's an enormous engineering feat to actually send light, interfere with itself. It's a very sensitive system and have it while the, the car is moving. That's why LIDARs are so expensive. But it's not fundamental. We can do it from a little chip with no moving parts. We don't actually need the whole beam to move. We can move the beam from the chip and control it electronically. Now, this is for autonomous vehicles, but we can do it also for AR, exactly the same thing. You can imagine that you have a glass, glasses that you're putting in, and on the side you have a little chip. And that chips, so I don't know why is this, oh, yeah, it's mov moving around. And on that little chip, you have a beam in the visible, very weak, that goes inside your eye and creates that virtual display. And that's completely feasible today. So you can imagine that you have, for example, you are driving around, and that uh, uh, display actually tells you what to do at every little step. For that, you need a movable beam with no moving part. It's sitting on your glasses just on the side. And we can do that today. The way we do it, we, we, we uh, send a beam of light, this is on, on a chip, send a beam of light, distribute it into multiple, all on a chip, multiple little uh, waveguards or tiny little miniaturized antennas. And when light actually gets out of those uh, um, waveguides, it forms a beam. And by delaying some of the light from some of the wave that's relative to others, I can actually steer that beam. So that technology is extremely uh, new. It's really just uh, uh, came out of uh, uh, my lab in the past a couple of years. We've di we did it in the NIRAYAR, which is the, behind uh, the autonomous vehicle um, uh, market, and now we are working for, uh, on uh, visible applications for AR uh, glasses. So this is kind of a zoom in of light being sent in 
distributed into that little chip where we can actually control how, how does it get out and where exactly it is uh, focused in 3D into your eye or uh, as, a, uh, as a display. So this is a uh, nice image that actually shows light being sent and distributed into the different uh, waveguides. So you can, you can get, get a sense of how the actual optical chip look like that is glued onto your uh, glasses. Uh, this is actual packaged uh, chip, so we're pretty advanced in that, uh, in that uh, technology. Uh, and when we make those, we, uh, these are all massively manufactured, so we make thousands of those on a single wafer. Uh, so this is how uh, uh, um, the, the chip look like, and I just wanna uh, end uh, with other emerging applications based on silicon photonics. Basically, when you think about anything related to optics, uh, uh, miniaturization is, is really uh, uh, the key here. So for example, for life science, one of the biggest market now is OCT. OCT is basically uh, ultrasound, uh, uh, but uh, uh, for light, right? Ultrasound has very, very low resolution if you use light, you get very, very high resolution. Uh, these uh, machines are available, but are extremely expensive. And we can do that now uh, using uh, those, these technologies, silicon photonics. Um, so this is how the, the actual chip uh, look like. We're working uh, on this, this technology that is uh, uh, in progress. And again, uh, this is for extremely uh, inexpensive mass manufactured uh, uh, imaging systems. So I'm gonna uh, uh, end up with this uh, image. This is an image of uh, breast tissue measured with the uh, uh, image with, with our photonic uh, uh, chip and it would cost uh, uh, a few percent of a full large uh, OCT system uh, today that is available in only very, very few laboratories. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>